I want to say thank you. I appreciate the 1090% rule. Is he flirting to see this week and wonderful. Men with low self-esteem would not want to do 90-10. This has to be a really emotionally mature, confident man to do 90-10. Plus, he's really interested in you. He really likes you. Men first attracted by their eyes. But then a few months later, he starts to actually see are you intelligent? Are you kind? Are you compassionate? But first thing they go by looks. And if he's willing to chase you, that means you're really attractive. You're very sexy and he's willing to put time, energy and money. And so it's a big compliment. Man is inappropriate when he thinks that a woman should do 50-50 for lunch and dinner or going to the movie when she has to pay 50%. If you're living with a man, if he thinks that you should pay 50% of the bills, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate if a man is getting drunk in front of you. It's an inappropriate if a man is asking you to get a hookup. It's inappropriate if a man expects for you to sleep with him after first, second, third, fourth, fifth date. Without, it's your foundation, it's your rules, you gotta have principles. And if he accepts that, for you to pay 50% to sleep with him, all of that is inappropriate. But who is appropriate to you? It's only you to judge if you date a man long enough. But if you think you will know a guy after a month or two, big mistake. Big mistake. I still don't know my husband, even though we've been together for 10 years. And I still discover new things about him and that's beautiful because we don't want to put a man or a woman in a box i know her you gotta continue to discover and discover because we're malleable and we continue to change what was interesting to me 10 years ago and what's now it's two different things so as for my husband and so it takes time but especially in the dating phase don't rush take your time do you advise on transitioning from dating to a relationship? Thank you. You got to watch my long program called Six Stages to Create a Happy and Lasting Relationship on YouTube. Because there's a five stages to create a happy and lasting relationship and how you transition from dating to a relationship. I'm going to give you a little tip here is when a man and a woman share authentically, I'm ready to date only you and he is ready to date only her. They become exclusive and that's when relationship begins. But you should not have sexual intimacy until you have a ring because every time a woman gets into sexual intimacy, in the background, every emotionally confident and healthy woman will desire to marry this guy. But a man loses all of his desire to marry you if you do the duties of a wife. And sleeping, cooking, doing laundry is a duty of a wife. And so that's why you shouldn't rush into it. Wait until you at least have a ring. And then if you're really important, are you, is he good and bad? Is it going to be great? Then have sex, but not before a ring. Because if you're going to sleep with him, why should he marry you? Because a man, when he marries a woman, to him, he's taking responsibility over you. And for a man, it's a big step. So what kind of woman should you be? So he would want to take responsibility over you and his future family with you. So if you're just sexy and beautiful, yeah, he would want to sleep with you. But will he marry and will he, will he commit to you? The chances are very low. You won't be able with a great sex to get a guy commit to you. But what women do, well, let me move in with him. I'll cook him. I'll clean. I'll have such a great sex. So he would want to marry me. No, that's the way women think. Men don't think like that. So please don't judge men the way you ladies think. Because we women think, well, if I'm going to talk to girlfriend this way and I'm going to cook for her and invite her and do things, she will reciprocate. Men don't function this way. And that's why you got to understand and learn men because they're completely opposite. The way they think, the way they feel, the way they rationalize things, the way they think about marriage and relationship and sex, all of that is very different. And that's why we're in a conversation here. And they're not willing to provide, they're not willing to help, they're not willing to protect you because you're not asking. And you gotta be gentle and you really gotta appreciate them because they're truly extraordinary if you're gonna start seeing men for who they really are. Real, strong, 
their leaders they go to war they build skyscrapers their providers their protectors but you gotta start hearing them like that appreciating them like that acknowledging them like that but if you think they're losers and they're not making money and they're just watching the porn and they're gonna leave you when you're old when you're gonna get sick then that's what you're gonna attract because our thoughts give us our reality so we have to be very responsible to how we think about men about ourselves about our friends about everyone we have to be very responsible my friends do you cover parenting teens sure ask me a question because oh my friends watch my video program that is two and a half something hours like that on youtube called how to raise kids zero to five five to, to 13 and 13 and up because how you treat kids zero to five five to 13 and 13 and up is three different things after they become teenagers, 13 and up, if you want to continue being authoritative and tell them what to do, they're going to rebel you. They're going to resist you. The only way kids going to listen to you, if you actually going to treat them like friends. And so the problem is not with teenagers. The problem is with parents. You're still trying to get them to do what you want them to do. And when they were seven and eight, it worked. But when they're 13, you got to stop doing that. And if you're going to start telling him, for example, you have a son or a daughter and hypothetically, hypothetically, they're smoking wheat and you don't want them to smoke wheat. And I'm now talking about really big topic, right? And it might sound ridiculous, but just please be in this conversation because it's a real case from my old client. He came to me and he said, what, what can I do? My 16 year old smokes every day. No matter what we do, no matter how much we're punishing him, he's still smoking weed. And obviously when kids are starting to drink, then when they're teenagers or they're smoking weed, something is not working in their life. And I said, how about you go and sit down with your son and smoke weed with him? He looked at me, said, Alisa, are you crazy? It's illegal. I said, I understand. But maybe after a few times when you're going to smoke, you're going to start opening up to you why he's smoking. And what's more important for you to figure out what's going on in your son's life or for you to be really strict parent and to continue demanding something that you won't be able to get anyway because your authoritative and your dictatorship is not working. So it was tough. And then a few months later, he said, I did it. So he was smoking weed with his son three times during that whole week. And on the fourth time, his son started to open up. friends that he used to be very close is now bullying him with other guys in school. And he lost his girlfriend, who is now dating his best friend, and he is heartbroken. And then father looked at him and he said, son, I am so sorry what you're going through. Please forgive me for judging you all the six months that what's going on. You used to be such a great student, used to play football, and now you're just smoking weed. And they talked and they talked. And at the end of that conversation, he said, I'm here for you. You can come to me with problems anytime. But can I ask you to stop smoking so you don't damage your health? And son held him and he said, I promise that I'm going to quit. Why I'm trying to tell you with this story is that you can continue punishing your teenagers and that's going to be very ineffective you can demand things and it's going to be ineffective or you can start talking to them the way you talk to your girlfriend or the way you talk to your guy friends and that's the only way they're going to start listening to you stop punishing them stop judging them stop demanding things from them it's time to start shifting from being a father or a mother to your teenager to being a friend it's very hard stage, but if you will achieve that, that's when kids going to start opening up to you and listen to you. Yeah. Some women will be sleeping. Yes, you cannot control others. And some men will be sleeping around in the dating stage. Let them do that because before they met you, they were sleeping around or they were taking care of themselves somehow, right? But it's not your responsibility to worry how is he taking care of himself or how she takes care of herself. You're still in a dating stage. And trust me, men know how to please themselves. They do, okay? And if you're worried that he will be sleeping with other w woman and he's not willing patiently to wait, he's not worthy.
he's not worthy. Yeah. My dates turn into therapy session for the men. How do I change this? If we're broken, if we haven't healed, we're going to be attracting broken people. And we'll be concentrating on fixing them in order to distract from whom? Ourselves. So instead of doing therapy to men, fully invest time into healing yourself. Once you're going to heal, your vibration goes up and you're going to start attracting a really worthy man who are already worked on themselves, who are already ready to provide, protect, nurture you and have a relationship with you and not someone who is broken and you have to fix. So the problem is not with them. Something in you that you haven't healed and it's a distraction to just continue to fixing and listening to them. Run away from men like that. But again, you will attract them because you're avoiding something that you haven't healed. I hope that helps. Energy, those women are destroying themselves, so let them. Yes, masculine women are destroying themselves by working and overworking and making money. Wishing them to continue to destroy just shares that, yes, you're still upset, hurt, and angry with women who hurt you. And it's also your duty to yourself to heal maybe from a nasty divorce maybe from a nasty breakup but until you do that by wishing people bad you're really hurting yourself i have a youtube channel and sometimes i see few people who are constantly doing dislike without knowing the more they're disliking my content the more they're connecting with me because people if they don't agree with me just move on <laughs> watch other channels that you are agreeing but staying in my channel to just dislike <laughs> they are putting all of their energy to continue staying connected with me and same thing here if you don't like someone when you're actually wishing them happiness you're starting to disconnect from them but if you're putting all of your energy to hate men or to hate women or to hate parents the more you actually glued to them and it's like having a cancer and trying to cut off cancer out of your body. But cutting off the cancer, that means you're cutting off liver and throwing it away. So you're not cutting it off, but you're not working on this cancer and liver problem. And so stop putting all of the negative energy out there that someone is wrong and someone is bad. Because that is not healing. That is not fixing the problem. Wish actually your excess happiness. So you can fully detach, heal, and attract someone who is emotionally healthy and happy. And that's why we deserve to be with someone who uplifts us, to make us happy. But the only way we're going to attract someone like that, if we're happy ourselves, because we deserve and we attract, we attract someone who we deserve. And if you have someone that you don't like right now, it's because you're not happy with yourself. And that is the tough very tough truth to accept and to be with. But first, before attracting them, you got to invest into yourself. And that's the biggest and greatest investment. Not in your education for you ladies and becoming a doc doctor and attorney. Education into knowing life and what makes you happy and how to succeed in a relationship and in the family and not into making more money. Making more money will give you superficial happiness. I had plenty of that for many years, but my heart and my soul was so empty because my relationships were not working because I was making money like you. <laughs> so learn on my mistakes. Learn now while you are still young or it doesn't matter you can learn in your 40s and 50s but start learning start investing into yourself yes my friends and it goes back to self-esteem people who have a low self-esteem are bad in communication and watch my video and i broke it into many many parts but if you'll go into my plus playlist on youtube um, there's a playlist for confidence and self-esteem because right now me telling you three minutes something answer not going to make a difference because self-esteem for us as a women, it's a process. It's a long process and we got to start slowly detaching from people who are very toxic and negative in order for our self-esteem to go up. For a man to increase the self-esteem, you got to truly start working on yourself, going to the gym absolutely necessary or running or doing kickboxing because all of that is a masculine energy and then start investing more time into work